Hello there, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men, women, and children of all ages. This is everyone's favorite jack of all trades with the foul mouth Commodore Urban. And this is a video I promised for all you all when I did my um, uh, video on the book Beginner's Guide to Repair and Line of Trains by Real Plumber. I was going to read the chapter on servicing your locomotive. So here is the chapter, guys. So fucking listen up and listen up good. I only want to do this once. <laughs> Alright. It says right here. Chapter 4. Servicing the Locomotive. Toy locomotives, which historically have mirrored the prototypes found in real railroads, were made in three basic types. Steam, diesel, and electric. Oh, and oh, 27 versions of the latest, most powerful steam and electric engines were staples of the line line throughout the pre-war era. During the post-war era, models of diesels made by different companies joined the line. Even today, at the close of the 20th century, toy train manufacturers continue to produce detailed and smooth running models of an assortment of steam, diesel, and electric type locomotives. Timelessness is one of the wonderful properties of the world of toy trains. There are no clocks and there are no calendars. So smoke, smoke belching New York Central Hudson can run on the same layout with the latest General Electric Dash 9s without seeming to be out of place. Whatever type of locomotive you have, the most important point is to get it running. That's what it is intended to do. So, what are you waiting for? Primary maintenance. The first step in servicing your locomotive, whenever it is either steam, diesel, or electric, is to make a careful visual inspection of all of the working parts. Begin with the wheels. When turned by hand, they should rotate freely without binding. There should be no evidence of loose wheels or bent axles. Note that some locomotives were geared in such a way that the wheels cannot be turned by hand. If yours is one of these types, ignore this step. Next, check for loose, bent, broken, or missing parts, loose wires, and so forth. If your locomotive is equipped with magnet traction, look for stray metallic objects that might be clinging to the wheels, axles, or side frames, and could get in the way or even damage your mechanism. Speaking of the mechanism, it is a good time to clean it. I suggest you start by removing any visible dirt, grime, and caked on grease from all accessible surfaces with a degreasing solvent such as mineral spirits or rubbing alcohol, and many, many cotton swabs. Use these solvents carefully in a well-ventilated area because they're volatile and flammable. Be sure they evaporate completely before you try to operate your locomotive. Yeah, because if not, you'll have a fireball. Next, remove dirt and oxidation from the tr wheel treads and the third wheel contact shoes or the rollers to ensure good electrical contact with the rails. A scotch bright scouring pad works well for this task. Avoid using steel wool. Follow up with solvent cotton swabs. Yes, definitely do that. The third step is to lubricate all moving parts. Put one drop of oil on the axle, shaft, and bearing, and a thin coat of grease on the gears. Be careful you don't apply too much of the lubricant because when warm, they tend to run to thin out and run into places where they're not needed. Consult the applying lubrication diagram before starting. Now right here, there is lubrication diagrams right here for two locomotives. These diagrams show the main lubrication points on the two popular styles of steam locomotives manufactured by Lionel. The L indicates where the grease is needed, and the O indicates where the oil is needed. And right here, here's a diagram showing the lubrication points on Lionel's diesel. So if you have your diagrams, if you do have diagrams, follow up. A number of excellent lubricants are on the market, both oils and greases, that are compounds specifically for toy trains. Use them if you haven't, but almost any kind of general purpose lubricant will work. Household oils such as 3-in-1, white grease such as lubricate, or even petroleum jelly will work. Just use something. Apply it sparingly each time, but do it often. The major cause of problems with toy railroad equipment is inadequate lubrication, meaning you don't put enough lubricant shit's gonna fuck up. Now, you're ready to test run the locomotive by itself. Put it on the track and turn on the power. Run it fast and slow around your test oval. Give it a chance to really warm up so the lubricants can penetrate the bearing surfaces. Let it run for at least 10 to 15 minutes. While the locomotive is operating, make sure you activate the sequence reverse mechanism many times. 
After a long period of inactivity, it often needs to run through a number of cycles before it works as well as it is intended. Two basic types of sequence units are in general use. You have the two position and the more commonly the three position. But the first type of locomotive goes forward to reverse and back again when the track power is interrupted. The second type features a neutral mode mode between the forward and the reverse. The sequence is forward, neutral, reverse, neutral, forward, and so forth. Most reversing mechanisms, known as the E-unit, have a laser for protruding from the locomotive that can be used to turn off the sequencing feature. The engine then functions in only a single mode. I can't emphasize enough the importance of putting your locomotive through the paces. Its performance should improve the more it runs. If it isn't true, keep continuing to read. Well, we are going to keep continuing to read, guys. So, troubleshooting and making field repairs. What can you do if nothing happens when you put the locomotive on the track to turn on the throttle? Old Ray has some answers. First, check to see if the transformer plug is all the way into the wall outlet, and the two wires leading to the track are fixed tightly in place. Now, give the locomotive a helping hand. Tap it a few times, push around the track, and it may wake up and start moving. If the locomotive doesn't regain consciousness but its headlight is on, the sequence lever may be in the L position, which means that your engine is stuck in neutral. Try pushing the lever back and forth a few times, then after disconnecting yeah, disconnecting the two wires from the track lock on, turn the locomotive upside down. Touch one of the wires to any unpainted part of the motor frame. With the other wire, touch the center rail pickup roller for contact. Still no luck? Don't give up until you tried a few more of my tricks. Hold the locomotive in an upright position and touch the wires again. Try different adjustments with the lever unit again. Should the locomotive run freely while being held in the air, but not on the track, the trouble may be with the center pickup power pickups. Because of wear or poor spring tension, they may not be making good contact with the center rail. Sometimes the motor will start and stop intermittently. If that's happening, look for a loose connection. Perhaps the wheels are turning, but oh so slowly, even at full throttle. That often indicates that the motor needs cleaning to restore its original power. Cleaning the motor isn't as difficult as it used to be, thanks to the invention of what I call TV tune-up in a can. TV tuner cleaner, available at Radio Shack and other electronic supply stores. <coughs> it ain't available no more. You want, C you want CRC QD electronic electrical cleaners, what you want. Stuff works better than TV tuner cleaner. You may have to particularly partially disassemble your locomotive to clean it adequately. If you do, take note as you proceed so you can correct and put the little beast back together. The points to be cleaned are the three copper segments on the commentator face, the three slots between them, the two carbon brushes, and the cylinder wells in which they ride. After a locomotive has been used for a long time, a black gun composed mainly of carbon dust and stray lubricant forms on these points. The ugly stuff reduces the efficiency of the motor by making the brushes stick to the wells and hindering the flow of electricity. Squirting a little TV tuner cleaner directly into the brush wells and onto the commentator face typically loosens up the dirt. Then you can clean out the commentator slots with a wood toothpick or other pointy soft stick. If possible, spin the commentator as you spray everything again. Mop up the mess with cotton swabs. Repeat the spraying and mopping operation until the cotton swabs no longer turn black. It's much easier. It takes time, but it's a lot easier than the old way. Yeah. And then you have um, smoke generators right here. Lionel steam locomotives use two types of smoke generators. Earlier models manufactured from the 1940s to the late 1950s for the ones fueled by little white pills. Later ones produced from the late 50s onward use smoke fluid. Both generators were equipped with an internal heating element and relied on a piston synchronized with the motion of the drivers to produce a puffing smoke effect. Although neither type of smoke generator was trouble free, the earlier ones are more found and operative today. Sometimes the nichrome heating element wires need to be replaced because they burnt out or broken. Most often, however, faulty smoke production is caused by a generator clogged with unexpended pill residue. Kids love dropping the pill down the stack. In such cases, the cure is simple and painless. Just keep running the locomotive until the pills melt. As it occurs, the volume of smoke will increase. It may take some time, so be patient, and definitely avoid feeding the beast or pills. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty funny. 
Whistles and horns. Whistles and horns of Lionel locomotives malfunction most often because of a broken pickup wire, dirty contacts, or the activating rel on the activating relay, or a faulty controller on the transformer. If you're lucky, the problem is a broken wire. It's the easiest to resolve since it can be spotted by visual inspection and then replaced. As for dirty contacts, you can remedy that situation by spraying them with CRCQD electronical cleaner. Then you can polish them with very fine sandpaper. To determine whether you have a faulty controller, you need to test it by using another whistle or horn that you know that works. Beyond this, an operative horn may be caused by a dead dry cell battery, corroded battery contacts, or a defect in the horn unit. If the battery is a problem, just change it. If the contact is a problem, just clean with sandpaper. Broken horn units are another story. They can't be easy. They can't be repaired easily. Though replacements are available from toy train part dealers, sluggish or noisy air whistle motors can often be helped by lubricating the armature sap and bearing. I recommend the uh, CRCQD electronical cleaner treatment for this often neglected motor. And finally, we're going to talk about light bulb replacements. A variety of bulbs can be found behind the headlight lenses of many toy locomotives. Many of them screw into their sockets, others have a bayonet base so they must be pushed down and rotated so they lock in place. Still others merely just plug in. Be sure your replacement is of the same type and voltage rating. You usually can find this information on the base of the bulb. Otherwise consult your dealer or parts supplier. Once you know which bulb to use, replacement may involve par partially disassembling the locomotive. Diesel shells must be removed following the procedure outlined earlier in the chapter. With steam engines, you would have to take off the boiler fronts and lead trucks. When the bulb is accessible, remove the old bulb and put the new one in. How simple is it? That's it. As I've always said, old toy train locomotives are tough creatures indeed. While built to withstand rough treatment in the hands of children, they were also in the process built to last. Many of them have survived the ravages of time in better condition than their owners. <laughs> they require a minimum of care, often no more than periodic lubricant and occasional cleaning to keep on going and going and going and going. And there's some pictures. So there you have it, guys. That is the chapter. Chapter 4 of uh, the Beginner's Guide to Repair and Idle Trains, uh, Servicing Locomotives. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section for me. And I'll get with you. And if you're new to my channel, you like what I'm doing, turn on the notifications and hit the subscribe button. And become a part of the Commodore's crew. So until next time, this is Commodore Urban saying have smooth seas and clear skies. Happy Sunday with you. And God bless. You take care now. Bye-bye.